Welcome to 20th Century Philosophy. Wittgenstein on rule following is one of the most puzzling and yet important aspects of his philosophy. And there's been a lot of interpretive debate about rule following and exactly what's required in order to be able to follow a rule. And so I just like to articulate two general positions on rule following to try to get at some of what is uh, agreed upon in terms of interpreting what he's what he's saying and some of what is puzzling about what he says about rule following and we can do this by thinking about uh, the position of a solitary rule follower and whether it's possible for an individual person say a person who's living alone on an island is that person is it possible for that person to develop rules and follow those rules all by herself or is the community absolutely essential? And there are two different uh, positions that have been taken with respect to solitary rule following. The first is that it is possible. The individual view is that the basis for rule following is the form of life, and that applies to individual action as well as community agreement. So a form of life may be sufficient. For, um, for grounding individual rule following if there are correctness conditions, if there are ways for that individual to be right and wrong, other than just their own private experience. Because um, it's clear from the private language argument that you can't simply name a sensation and remember it, and that constitute uh, any kind of, of check for yourself. That your own consciousness and how you feel about a rule or what you think about a rule or how you personally imagine meaning, that's going to be insufficient to rule following. There's got to be some external check to create a, a, a rule that, that it can be right and wrong. And if it can't be right or wrong, then it's not a rule. It's not, there's no following involved. So that's the one position, the individual position, that there could be uh, external correctness conditions that are part of your form of life, uh, and those could determine what constitutes rule following. Alternatively, the community view is that that's not possible, that social agreement is necessary for determining the correct correctness conditions for rule following. And so this is the more obvious interpretation in relation to the things that Wittgenstein says about rule following because uh, most of the examples that he gives, almost all of the examples that he gives, are social situations. They're situations where there's a pupil and a student or the builder and the other guy um, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a social training situation and what he wants to illustrate is the way in which uh, the, the social agreement underlies the, um, the, the correctness conditions, all right? So the community view is a very strong uh, way of, you know, very clear way of, of interpreting Wittgenstein. But one of the problems with the community view is that it, um, it goes against the sense that we have individually that, um, you know, that you know, we, we can set correctness conditions or that the world sets correctness conditions on our actions that um, if, for example, I were to um, uh, eat a berry that is poisonous um, and then, you know, remember that this is the berry that's poisonous and this is the berry that's nutritious, that the world would support that distinction, that the, the rule that I established for myself, you know, don't eat that berry, eat that berry, seems like if I made a mistake and ate the bad berry, that the, that the world would provide objective criteria for me to uh, enforce that rule and to, to remind myself, oh, right, these were the bad berries, these are the good berries bad, good, bad, good, right? So there seems like there are external conditions. Even if I'm just by myself rummaging around in a forest, it seems like the world could provide some correctness conditions for me in my rule following. So, you know, thinking about this then in terms of the form of life, we can think about the form of life as the set of reactions, abilities, and practices that are basic to action, and this is where justification ends. And, and this is you know, standard Wittgenstein, both views are going to accept 
that that's what a form of life is and that's its function that it undergirds our it you know it's it's how we live it's you know our behavior and and um and 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 social activities and that's what you know that's what is the basis for uh, all of our rule following but the two different views then have different interpretations about exactly what the role of the form of life is so on the individual view, the form of life is the foundation for, for the justification of rules. So, um, you know, rules are based on the form of life, and it's really the form of life principally that determines whether a rule works or doesn't work. Whereas for the community view, the form of life is the cause of the social system, and it's the social system that justifies the rules. So, you know, it's a question of where the justification lies. Does can can the the form of life itself be a justification for rule following, or is it only the causal source for the rule following, which is then only justified within the the community? So this is a basic question in Wittgenstein interpretation about. Uh, you know, what is the role of the form of life? And I'm inclined towards the individual view. I think that minds are uh, something that it, are, are biological, evolutionary products of uh, natural selection, and they serve the function of helping us get around in the world. And so, for me, the idea that our rules are based on our form of life and justified by our form of life makes makes really good sense. But as I think about the examples that Wittgenstein gives and the ways in which language functions um, as a, a set of games, as different sorts of games, I think maybe um, both answers are correct and they apply to different sorts of games that the individual view may be what uh, is involved in actions, uh, you know, rules like uh, like like satisfying hunger and um, you know and other kinds of basic needs, where the community view applies more to rules like mathematics, where uh, you really need social agreement to determine something like uh, plus two, and what that actually means and what it is involved in making that go on and the entire system of rules that is mathematics for example is important that it's a social agreement and that doesn't seem like there's any kind of um, you know biological grounding or justification that is going to be sufficient for uh, for justifying what plus two means so, um, so it may be that, that there are just different language games that apply in these different sorts of um, these different sorts of case. Ultimately, the the question for Wittgenstein is uh, what determines whether an action is in accord with a rule? How is that grounded? How is that justified? And I think in any case, whether it's the individual case or the individual interpretation or the community interpretation, for Wittgenstein, what determines accord with the rule is use, that you use it in a way that's appropriate. And that appropriateness, that normative value, can be grounded in a number of different sorts of ways, depending on the sort of language game that you're playing. And so looking at the ways in which our language is used is fundamentally what is going to give us insight into what meaning is and, uh, and, and, and why it works in the way that it works.